and we have built our society, our economy, and our health for centuries. Without the sea, Rosas would surely not exist. Sea is life. For all these reasons, Rosas is firmly committed to protecting our sea, the Mediterranean Sea. This sea that we share with dozens of countries and hundreds of communities. The Mediterranean is our common heritage, and we must work together to protect it and allow future generations to enjoy its benefits in a sustainable way. On the other hand, climate change is also a threat of which we are starting to live in consequences. Temperature change, sea levels rising, and the disappearance of ecosystems will affect us all, from Istanbul to Cap de Creus. That is why we must work together to adapt to its short-term effects and prevent its long-term worsening. Protecting the sea and fighting climate change is urgent and a moral obligation of all citizens and administrations. That's why we celebrate such a project today, putting our city and its resources at your disposal. We encourage you to continue with your commitment. We guarantee that Rosas is going to be by your side all the way. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Now it's the turn for uh, Monse Mindan. I, I don't know the name in English. Primera Tinent d'Alcalde and Presidenta Junta. As Deputy Mayor. Thanks. Deputy Mayor of uh, Rosas and uh, is the president of the, the committee, I would say, of, uh, in charge of uh, helping in the management of the uh, Cap de Creus Natural Park. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, good morning and welcome to Rosas. Uh, soyez la bienvenue to Rosas, uh, tout le monde qui parle aussi français. Um, my name is Monse Mildan, and I am speaking to you as the president of the Junta Rectora of the Natural Park of Cap de Creus. This management authority is formed by eight towns and other administrations. The eight towns are Cadaqués, Llançà, Port de la Selva, Selva de Mar, Vila Juiga, Palau Sabardera, Pau i Rosas. I would like to thank everyone all the hard work you have done the last years to look, for, to look out for the protection of our marine environment. Our sea, and the Major has just said that, it's very important, either as a social level, economic, or touristic. In fact, captaining the park in conjunction with all the towns and other tourism companies we are trying to achieve the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism. Only by achieving excellency in sustainability, I'm sorry, it's a very hard word for me. Sustainability, we can offer the best quality tourism destination. I hope that you really enjoy Rosas and mainly our natural park. Thank you all very much. Just one thing, if there is anyone that wants to connect the Wi-Fi, you, uh, you have to look for Teatra 1, and you have to write Teatra with capital letter, the first one, and 2013. Then you will achieve it. Thank you. And now is the turn for... Um uh, the director of uh, uh, Cap de Creus Natural Park, uh, Pons Feliu. Hello, good morning. We are happy to welcome you to Cap de Creus Natural Park. Sorry. Sorry. So I'll just add some words uh, at the ones that uh, Joan the Major and also Monse, the president of the Cap de Creus Protection uh, Committee. Uh, some words about the park. Uh, our natural park is uh, 14,000 hectares. Uh, most of them are terrestrial, 11,000 but we have 3,000 hectares, which are marine areas, a protected area. From them, uh, the 3,000, we have a small part of it, which is called Reserva Natural Integral, which is a, a strict protection. This is in north uh, part of Cap de Creus uh, Peninsula. Actually, this afternoon, we'll be able to travel with the, with the boat. We'll be able to see both Cadaqués area and the southern part of Cap de Creus Natural Park. We'll be able also to snorkel some of you at uh, Cap Norfeu, which is one of the parts of the park which is protected as with another protection level, which is called RNP, Reserva Natural Parcial. It's not as a strict protection, but it's still a good protection area for, for Cap de Creus. 
In natural park, we have also in the terrestrial uh, area, we have several endemic plants, endemic species. Some of them are endemic from Cap de Creu, so you can only see them in, in all the world, both uh, plants and also animals. We have uh, different habitats, uh, both in marine areas and terrestrial. We have uh, some ranges or peaks that reach almost 700 meters high, so we are, and they are not far from the sea, so our diversity in the natural park is, is I think, is very rich. So we are now working in uh, what we call the PRUC, is a management plan to regulate all kind of activities we are doing at the same time in this natural area. As uh, they said, uh, as uh, the president said, uh, Monse, we are in a very important touristic area, so we have to manage all these activities that take place at the same area, which is Cap de Creus. We have a lot of nautical activities, both recreational and also uh, fishing, um, uh, professional fishing in this area. We have scuba diving, snorkeling. We have all kinds of activities in this area, so we have to do a, this plan, and I think it's an ambitious plan, and if we are able to achieve it, I think it will be uh, a good area to manage all this, all this area, and we have the privilege of uh, managing it. Uh, just to, to let you know that uh, I think this project will also help us very much in knowing more deeply all we have in, in our hands, all we can do to prevent this climate change to be a big problem for the loss of diversity, for the uh, increment of the, or the increase of the sea level, and I hope we'll be able to work together to make this area also a good place for all these animals, plants, and all these habitats, and also for people who live in this area. So you are, we welcome you to this natural park, and I hope you will enjoy this morning working here in the theater, and in the afternoon visiting the park. So thank you very much for being here. So thank you for your welcome speeches, and now we will start the sessions. Yeah. Remember, you can check your program with uh, scanning the QR code here. And I just uh, wrap up uh, how we are going to organize uh, the sessions today. Now we have uh, a present uh, two presentations on the projects that uh, we joined forces to do this joint final event uh, on, the, on the, to show you the projects and, um, and, um, and the main outcomes of those projects. Especially, we wanted to come here to Rosas because uh, Cap de Creus, as you know, is, uh, has been one of the pilot sites of uh, the MP Engage project. And uh, they are here now in the, in, uh, in among you, among the public, among the participants that have been involved in some of the activities that we implemented during the um, MP Engage project. And we thought that it was a good opportunity to share what is the experience and what are the results that come from this, uh, what the efforts that they put uh, in contributing with their knowledge and their time and their expertise in the, in the implementation of the pilot actions. And for them, I think, for the people that has been involved in these pilot actions, see uh, this global perspective or more general perspective of the projects, we thought that it was a good opportunity to give them a return on a, a about the, 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 the inputs that they provided during, during the projects. I think that we, during these last days, we have been discussing uh, or showing and uh, making a lot of presentations and this issue about uh, sharing, this uh, issue about um, uh, looking for collaboration, cooperation at different levels, it was uh, an issue that has been recurrently mentioned during our discussions and I think that uh, it's a good opportunity to make this uh, uh, final uh, day of uh, our Met Together tour here in Rosas, uh, sharing our experience with the local actors on, uh, on MPH. So just to let you know that here we have uh, people from uh, partners from uh, both projects, MP Engage and MP Networks, and we have uh, people from different uh, 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 Mediterranean countries. Yesterday I, we, we were kind of making the round during the dinner, so we have people from Libya, from Morocco, from Italy, from France, from uh, Lebanon, uh, from Croatia, from Montenegro, uh, from Slovenia, and uh, probably I'm, I'm missing uh, some, so, but yes, to see what, is, what are the dimensions of uh, the project. So I'm going to ask now uh, Carol Martinez, who was the coordinator of uh, uh, the MPA Networks project to provide uh, the insights of uh, the MPA Networks. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. 
Thank you very much for the warm welcome. We are delighted to be here in this very nice city of Rosses, and we look forward to discover the, the park. So as uh, Kim nicely indicated, we have teamed up to make this final event in order to highlight uh, the synergies between our different activities. And as you will see further, we have uh, actually partners in, in common. Unfortunately, and this uh, region in Rosses was not a pilot site of uh, MPA networks. Our pilot site uh, was in, in Palma de Mallorca. But nevertheless, you will see that uh, we have been developing activities and tools that could be uh, as well relevant for, for this region. So our project um, gathered um, 10 partners and 21 associated uh, partners in seven countries, as you can see on, on this uh, map. And uh, the, the whole idea of uh, this project was definitely to address the different challenges that uh, marine protected area managers are facing on a daily basis. And the main idea was uh, definitely to equip them, to support them, uh, and in order to help them to improve the status of the marine biodiversity and to enhance the management of these marine protected areas. So as you can see on, on this nice uh, uh, drawing, our activities have been mainly organized through three main pillars. We have been implementing uh, pilot activities, we have been uh, providing as well capacity uh, building um, uh, through different uh, trainings opportunity and we organize a workshop, both online and face-to-face and -face in order to adapt ourselves to the uh, COVID and pandemic uh, situation. But nevertheless, we have been able to, to meet, uh, to bring together the MPAs managers, but as well the stakeholders, in order to discuss about their daily uh, issues and to find solutions. And on the basis of all the lesson learned, all the feedback, we have been able to, to capture uh, the main needs, the main recommendation for decision maker. So in a, in a nutshell again, uh, we had uh, pilot sites, um, we enhanced capacities, but uh, I forgot to mention that uh, another important area of work was, again, to foster the, the networks between uh, MPA managers, both at the national level, but as well at the sub-regional level, uh, as you will see. So to give you an overview of what we have been able to, to achieve with our partners, and thanks to their uh, strong dedication, uh, we have been able to implement uh, eight pilot uh, actions in seven countries, and this uh, represents a cumulated area of uh, 26,800 hectares, so it's quite, uh, quite important. We have been uh, uh, able to mobilize uh, our thematic working groups of MedPan to keep on uh, channeling expertise and support to the MPA managers and the stakeholders. We organize, um, as I mentioned, regular trainings on fisheries, on mobile species management, but as well on financing in order to support the MPA managers to find ways to sustain uh, their incomes and to support uh, their effective management. We organized a very important uh, event last December with the 2023 MED uh, MPA uh, Forum, and it has been a, a great opportunity to bring all the marine conservation community in Monaco and in order to further exchange and brainstorm about the key challenges and important outcome has been uh, the presentation and the discussion about the post-2020 MPA roadmap, which is a very important uh, framework to implement further action in, in the regions. And as I was indicated, uh, we have been supporting uh, networking. So this represents, uh, a, um, I would say, work with more than 35 marine protected areas. We have been able to support the Spanish network, RAMPE, uh, enabling uh, through our partners, Marias, the organization of meetings in order to further brainstorm about uh, their action plan. 
we have been able, uh, thanks to our partner, the Briuni National Park, to create the Croatian Marine Protected Area Network. And this network uh, is bringing together 15 organizations in Croatia. We have been supporting exchange between um, the French and Italian uh, Marine Protected Areas managers in, uh, in the framework of the Pelagos Sanctuary. And as I was mentioning, we work as well at the sub-regional level uh, in the Adriatic. And the whole point was to move from the existing network, Adria Pan, to an Adrian Pan, bringing as well together um, MPAs from the Adriatic region with more MPA managers from the Union regions. And uh, as, I, as I said, we have been el elaborating a policy recommendation that uh, we actually uh, discuss both during our technical workshop in Palma two days ago and yesterday in Barcelona during our policy uh, meeting. So you can see uh, where our different uh, pilot action uh, happen and you will hear more from our common uh, partners both uh, in Brioni National Park and uh, the Portofino MPA. So this shows as well how we can actually, on common pilot site, bring together our different uh, initiatives and further support uh, in synergy the marine protected area managers. And here you can see better the, the effort of networking both at the national and the sub-regional uh, level. So maybe uh, a little bit more detail about our events, why it was uh, very important to join our forces and to team up. And definitely we wanted to bring together our respective partners, but as well common partners, to share views, to share insight in order to see how the, the different, uh, I would say, topic we address uh, within our respective project could actually bring together strong recommendation for further action, but as well bold uh, political uh, decision. So we had this technical workshop, we had this policy event, and here we are in, in Roses to share as well what we did and to further support uh, your activities on a daily basis. So I will conclude with this uh, nice drawing, as you can see, um, uh, our meetings, but as well our past months and years have been uh, quite uh, active, despite uh, difficult situation with the pandemic. But I would like to, to praise here the strong commitment of our partners, and I believe it has been the same uh, here uh, with, for the MPA Engage project. So thank you again very much. Be sure that uh, we will stand by your side and we will uh, definitely use all the knowledge, all the key recommendations that came from these uh, two projects to further advance progresses uh, for marine conservation in this, uh, in this region. Thank you, thank you very much. So now is uh, the turn of explaining uh, MP Engage uh, outcomes and results and why we propose to work on MP Engage. So I'm Joaquin Garabo, and as I say before, I work as a scientist at the Institute of Ciencias del Mar, which is one of the largest uh, research centers of, from the Spanish Research uh, Council. So just to sit the scene again about the climate change, and now we are suffering a, a really uh, hot uh, weather in June, which is not normal. And um, it's just that we are living in these emergency times uh, uh, regarding the climate, and especially in the Mediterranean, and especially in the water, as uh, is it shows in this, um, in this map, is the warming rates across the Mediterranean. And as uh, you see, the, the warming is not uh, uh, homogeneous through the, the entire basin, but uh, it's clear, and if we make the averages, it's around 0 0.4 degrees uh, per decade. Uh, uh, and this warming rate is uh, between three and two five, two five um, uh, larger, so greater than 
the ocean uh, warming, right? So we are really in a hot spot for climate change, and this is uh, translated by the warming rates, but as well by the coverage of the marine heat waves in the Mediterranean. And in this graph, what you see here is uh, the evolution through time of the coverage of uh, the marine heat waves. So how, what is the percentage of the, the Mediterranean that has been affected by marine heat waves? And as you see, by the, in the last years, we have been suffering um, uh, almost 100% of the, of the Mediterranean has been affected by, um, by um, uh, marine heat waves. So we have a need to tackle, I mean, if we want to work on uh, um, marine protection and designing uh, uh, marine protected areas, we have to take into account the climate change issues. This is clear, otherwise it's going to be we can have uh, not the desired results. So you know that we are in this framework now at uh, different levels, at the European level, at the Mediterranean level, and at the international level. This commitment by the different countries to protect 30% of the ocean by uh, 2030. And uh, this is something that has been uh, uh, agreed in the different uh, uh, conventions. And there are different scales, uh, as, uh, as uh, it shows here, global, Mediterranean, and European. And, but it's clear that uh, at the European regions, uh, they have as well a uh, uh, play to role. And at the, end, at, the end, at the end of this process, there is the local MPAs that they are going to face, uh, how we, we are, they are going to manage uh, the, um, these areas, this protection and the enlargement of this, uh, some of those uh, protected areas. So the, there is a, a, a challenge, and now we have a, a, this challenge on how we are going to do this. And since I was mentioning that the climate change is an issue, and uh, since it's not so many uh, work done in, in this sense, the MP Engage project, the main aim of uh, MPH project was to uh, support Mediterranean MPAs to be effective ocean-based solutions to face uh, climate change. So this is what uh, it was uh, our purpose. So how we did it, or how we intended to do it, or how we want to contribute to this uh, uh, main goal. So we implemented five main uh, actions, our activities, and all of them in the center, it has been always the participatory uh, approaches, so making that the actors, that they are in, uh, act, um, having activities in the uh, marine protected areas, they have a word to say and they contribute to this. So we have been implementing monitoring activities, so what is going on with uh, the ecosystems, uh, what are the effects of the climate change in, in the ecosystems. We implemented citizen science activities uh, to contribute to this monitoring and as well to uh, raise awareness about the climate change and other environmental issues. We assess the vulnerability of, at local scales of the, of the um, MPAs to uh, climate change. So there has been a lot of work here to, uh, to understand at the local scale what are the potential effects of, um, uh, of uh, the climate change. And finally, uh, in the bottom of the slide, you see that uh, we developed um, a climate change adaptation plan, so a list of measures, a list of, a list of actions that it can be implemented at the, at the local scale to adapt, uh, uh, because the management plans of the MPAs can be adapted to the, the context of the climate change. So, as I say, we use these uh, participatory approaches and we use uh, uh, what we call the ELIX, uh, the quintuple ELIX participatory approach. So that this means, uh, this fancy name, what it means is that uh, quite ca categories or groups of actors we are taking into account. So of course the MPA managers, the scientists, but as well the, the citizens, the, 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 the society, the public, the general public, the local authorities, and uh, some of the socioeconomic actors, mainly the fishermen and uh, the recreational diving activities. So who has been implementing this is just, uh, um, uh, we have been working for the, the last 32 months, and uh, as I say, we are uh, 15 uh, uh, partners working on this, and uh, for, uh, we had a budget around uh, 3 million euros. And the partners, uh, we try to combine all these quintuple ELIX uh, participants, so we have research institutions, national administration, regional administrations, NGOs, 
and uh, marine protected areas management bodies in, in included. So we work it as uh, MPA networks in some pilot actions and pilot areas. So we have uh, seven pilot areas that you have uh, uh, a map here, the, the different dots of position, that the different MPAs that participated. And uh, you can see, and this is um, a map of the sea surface uh, temperature, that uh, the MPAs are located in a, in a different environmental context and as well in a different socioeconomic context. So this gives us the opportunity to learn how the tools that we are developing can be applied and transfer because this is our ultimate goal to transfer all the tools that we have been developing uh, to the entire network of uh, MPAs, so of the Mediterranean. And to do this, and, uh, we, we have, besides of the partners that have been really heavily involved in the, in the implementation of the actions and the development of the tools, we had uh, three uh, what we call capitalization uh, partners around uh, capitalization boards, I would say, and we have uh, 30 uh, partners that have been uh, included in these capitalization boards. We had other MPAs that they were willing to use or implement some of the tools that we have been developing. Research institutions that want to contribute to develop uh, the tools and uh, to, to provide inputs on, on this or validate the tools that we are working. And then a group of uh, um, uh, networks or uh, different organizations that act at, uh, at more at the Mediterranean level that can take or help us or support us in the spreading or, or in the transferring of, this, of these tools. So I'm, maybe it's going to be long, uh, but uh, I wanted uh, yesterday when I was uh, uh, trying to finish uh, the presentation, I, I already knew that we did uh, an extraordinary job and uh, an excellent job, and I wanted to provide some examples, but at the end I had to cut, uh, so, no, so I just choose some of the, of the main outcomes and not for all activities that we have implemented, but it's just to give you the flavor of the kind of uh, products or the kind of uh, uh, issues that we have been dealing. So the first one is about the vulnerability assessment. So this, as, as I was saying, uh, we, we work in, in the assessment of the socio-ecological socio uh, uh, vulnerability of the MPAs. So we wanted to know how the climate change is affecting uh, the ecosystems, the habitats, the different species, and how this is affecting the ecosystem services that they are providing and the activities that depend on, this, uh, on these ecosystems. So we were uh, uh, trying to understand the vulnerability as the exposure to this uh, hazard, or the, to this uh, uh, climate uh, change uh, impacts. The sensitivities, because uh, at the same temperature, different species can react in a different way, so the sensitivity. And then we, we, we evaluated as well what is the adaptive capacity of the, um, of the different components, either in the ecological and in the socioeconomic activities. It's, uh, I cannot go into the details, but it's just to give you an idea that uh, we get these kind of really nice figures that you, uh, some of them, you can uh, check it out in uh, some of the roll-ups that are in the, in the hall about the results on the, on the particular, the study that has been done here by the Generalitat of Catalonia for the uh, Cap de Creus uh, area. And we developed a tool uh, which is now online, and uh, this tool, you can check it and navigate through this to, to see what are the results obtained in the, in the different uh, uh, pilot, uh, pilot uh, MPAs that participated in the project. And you get this, also this kind of nice uh, outputs uh, about the sensibility of the different species that have been chosen in the different MPAs and other parameters that I'm not going to go into detail now. But it's just to let you know that through this tool there are all the materials that for other MPAs that are willing to implement this in their, their own MPA, they can use it and it's freely used it and all the materials are, are there. Another output, but I'm not going to. I'm going to move to the monitoring tools because we have been heavily involved as well in uh, developing these uh, monitoring tools that are, uh, are coming not from the experience of this project. We have been working quite uh, for a very long time on this with uh, the partners uh, that are participated in the project, like uh, the Station Zoological of Naples by Ernesto Azzurro and Carlo Cerrano from University of uh, uh, Politecnica de la Marque. And we, 
put here our wisdom, I would say, uh, to provide uh, really cost-effective um, uh, monitoring protocols to be able to, to tackle or to, to understand what are the effects of the climate change. And we have these uh, main categories in your um, uh, right hand, which is about what are the changes in the, t in the physical the chemical uh, conditions, so in this case temperature, what, is, what are the changes in the species distribution, which is uh, one of the things that our climate change is, is uh, pushing, the episodic events like the, the mass mortalities that are affecting more and more uh, the, 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 the ecosystems and how the climate change is affecting as well the, the changes in, in the reproduction cycles, for instance, the technology climate change. So you have here, this, uh, we make this booklet that is uh, with all the description of the, of the monitoring protocols and this is freely available to anyone that wants to, to have a look and as we will see later, we have as well many other tools uh, to help and support the implementation, the right implementation of this. So the idea of this implementing these uh, monitoring protocols is to have the information at the local, at the sub-regional, at, at regional level, because they are providing the same, uh, getting information in an harmonized way, and we are able to provide this uh, information on the climate change impacts uh, or effects at the, at the different levels. And this is really important because we need uh, we need to build these baselines to understand what are the magnitude of the changes that we are observing and to be able to speak to each other across the, the Mediterranean to know, you know, what is happening here, what is happening there, and what are the solutions that have been implemented in, in different areas. And as I was saying, we have uh, uh, developed not only the text where we have the description, there are uh, really nice video tutorials on the different steps that you have to use, we have uh, the um, uh, the net platform is uh, hosting some of the, uh, the protocols in the way that the, the people can uh, you know, provide or upload the data, and we provide uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, results or analysis of this and supporting. Uh, because what we want to do at the end, so is not only support the monitoring activities in the field, so knowing how to do it. Uh, we provided as well a tool, a specific tool to, to understand what the, the data is telling us. So we are providing supporting in the analysis of, uh, of, this, um, of this data. But not only the analysis, we were kind of uh, working really hard to, uh, to support the managers in, in the terms that, okay, these are the results of the implementation of uh, your uh, the monitoring protocols, but what is telling me uh, for, for the implementation of uh, regulations, for instance. So we are providing the assessment. So according to the values of uh, the, the information that we are getting, we could say if this habitat or this species is in good or in bad condition, and according to this, the managers can, can then decide what to do with this. So we are really proud of this, uh, of this too. And just some figures about uh, um, the magnitude of the results that we have been getting, not only for MP Engage uh, project, of course, uh, because uh, this is, has been a long-term effort, but for instance, we have more than 3,000 transects um, uh, in, uh, in uh, seven countries of uh, fish visual census to determine changes in uh, fish species uh, distribution, species, species that are indicator of climate change. 20 million of uh, early uh, data points have been collected so far, which represents more than 2,000 years of uh, record, or, or early records on time if we put them together, and more than 500 uh, fishermen interview during these years. And if we go further, I think that uh, these numbers will be uh, in increasing uh, quite fast. And this, uh, we are, I'm reaching the end of my presentation, and this is just to give, uh, these are the, the 10 uh, non-regret uh, um, uh, adaptation measures that has been kind of compiled uh, from the different uh, MPAs that uh, we have this, uh, what we call uh, adaptation action plan, joint plan, and it's uh, as well in the web page, so you can uh, download it. Uh, but as I say at the beginning, the main goal of MP Engage was to provide these MP, uh, this, um, adaptation action plans that include, of course, the adoption, for instance, of uh, the monitoring approaches that we propose. 
So it has been a long journey, and I, yesterday when I was thinking, say, okay, we did the first uh, meeting in Barcelona in, the year, in January 2, 2020, and it was as it should be all the, the meetings in present, so this is a photo that we take there. But then, as you all know, we pass to this era of uh, teleconferences, and we get, uh, we, uh, we become masters of organizing webinars, and this is a, one, a screenshot of one of the webinars that we organized. All the webinars are on, online, I mean, uh, you can uh, check it then, and it was a description of mono, many of the methods, or most of the methods that we have uh, been developing. And yesterday we had, uh, these days, we had again uh, the final event, and luckily enough, it, it could be in presence like, like today, so it has been on, off, <laughs> and in the middle all the, all the and it was nice to see that uh, MPA managers, MPA uh, partners, MPA engaged partners are unstoppable and they have even kids. So we are, have a second generation of, uh, of uh, MPA engaged or MPA uh, lovers, I would say, uh, for the future. So, so it's, uh, it's guaranteed. And now you have the passion so to see uh, one, one minute video, if it works that we did it at the end of uh, the first series of uh, webinars that we organized in, uh, in May to, uh, 2020. It was a huge effort that we provided there for right, all the partners because we had to adapt really fastly to it. Uh, and it was quite successful because uh, if I remember well the figures that we get uh, for these webinars, we had more than 500 participants in the different webinars. We, had, we organized nine uh, different webinars. And uh, at the end, we wanted to, to somehow to thank all the people and we prepare this, uh, this video. Let's see if it works. Are you passionate enough to wait for one more minute? Yes, okay, let's try it. <laughs> So that, this is my last slide, and uh, it's the dilemma or the motto of uh, MP Engage, uh, act local and theme Mediterranean, and we think that uh, we have more than 1,300 uh, MPAs in the Mediterranean, so we think as this as uh, more than 1,000 opportunities to adapt to the climate change. So act local and theme Mediterranean. Thank you very much. So I didn't do my job quite well because I, at the beginning of the session I had to explain the entire organization of the session, but uh, you know, this is the last day and we are a little bit, and I want, uh, I prefer to be like this. Today is going to be more relaxed, so let's, let's take it uh, relaxed. So now we have this, uh, 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 the, the second block of uh, today's uh, session is about communication products that uh, we developed in MP Engage, so I'm going to ask Manuela Damen and Ernesto uh, Dazzurro to, to join us, or later if you want, Ernesto, or, or whenever you want. And then after this uh, presentation of, by Manuela that you will see really nice uh, products. Um, let me put your slide here. And um, uh, we have this round table that we call Voices from MPA uh, Managers or Voices from the Mediterranean MPAs or something like this. But it's going to be a round table to discuss about the experience of being involved in uh, these uh, projects and it's going to be really informal, so it, it's going to be an exchange. And then we will have the, the closing, some words for the closing, and then the lunch will be ready for us uh, and to enjoy. And then, of course, you know that we have this uh, diving and uh, sailing activities in the afternoon. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Manuela Damen. I've been working like since the start of the project uh, on the communication, in the communication of MPA Engage. And uh, let's say that this, com this uh, presentation was not uh, planned 
at the beginning in the uh, Met Together final event. But we have seen, and all one of you that uh, have been participating to the uh, Met Together tour since the first day, uh, probably have noticed that communication has been um, carried out from the very start, from the first round table to the last one. Communication is really important to get uh, all the goals of the project. Uh, now, for instance, I put here the uh, main goals of the MPA Engage project, but it's for sure the same also for MPA networks. And here you can see that communication is fundamental of course for the citizen science, but also for the participatory approach, the harmonized monitoring uh, and the vulnerability assessment. And more in general, uh, we also aimed to uh, speak to the general public. And uh, so I think it's, it's very important to put in the spotlight uh, the communication aspects that is really joining all the uh, aspects of these, um, of these projects. And so this, is present, this presentation is very short, but I wanted to put together some concepts that probably we already mentioned during the last days, uh, but to reinforce them and to have them uh, very much present uh, during all our activities. This is the definition of communication. And, um, well, I put in, la in yellow the key points of this definition. I, you can see there the word sharing. And this is very important because there, there is not the concept of being in different levels. Uh, we should share our information with the targets. We are not teaching them, we are not disseminating. We should be at the same level to share information with them. And uh, this is very important because we, uh, uh, we can uh, be uh, at the same level, and we should think that also the information that we receive from them could be very important to reach all our objectives. And uh, the other concept that is evidenced is the common understanding. This is quite difficult because, uh, as you know, we have many, many actors in the communication pro progress, um, in the communication. So uh, who is communicating in our case, mostly uh, is scientists, MPA managers, environmental agency, and then we try to communicate to features, divers, you can read alone, of course, and, uh, and there are a lot of connection. Also within the um, partners of the projects. I know on my side, being involved in communication since the start, that also to collect all the information from the partners of uh, coming from different fields, I had to use different languages with all of you. And uh, also knowing personally the individuals that are working in these different agencies, it's easier uh, to communicate. So to get really in touch with the, the people working. The, the, the important thing is to uh, find a common language register. Because of course we are not uh, speaking all the same language. I mean, it's not about lang national languages. It's more speaking about uh, the technical languages or our, our field. So it's really important when we need to speak with uh, uh, different targets to find a way to reach the uh, common part that is evidenced with the yellow arrow uh, between the, the different people. And doing this will uh, really create an easier environment to um, reach a common language. Of course, it could be needed uh, the help of uh, professional communicators. This is... Uh, depending of uh, what uh, is needed uh, in the special case. It. But anyway, this uh, uh, common language register, it's really, really important. And now, um, I 
want also to recall you that the final goal of communication, at least in my opinion, is the engagement. Because uh, all the actions that we are trying to reach, all the goals, at the end are uh, uh, making by the single individuals. So with the communication, we want to engage these people. We want to engage them to feel, make them feel part of something bigger, part of the network, so that they can be more happy, let's say, to act for uh, our final goal. Because um, we need, of course, uh, the collaboration of everyone to reach uh, our goal. Uh, now I will show you quite quickly the, some example of the communication products uh, with the help of Ernesto of the MPA Engage project. And uh, here uh, it's um, a um, mind map. There is a mind map of what we try to do with the communication of the project. Because here uh, there is represented a, a cloud uh, that should be like a box containing all the contents that during the course of the project uh, we were thinking could be good to share with the public and with the, um, all the other targets of communication. Of course, uh, not all the contents were good for uh, all the communication targets, and not all the means of communication could be used uh, for communicating all these um, contents. So here we have a kind of uh, summary of what, you have, what we have done. Uh, we spent a lot of, a lot of time in uh, uh, social media um, promotion. We have accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And, and we, of course, uh, uh, try to translate some contents in the way they can be used on social networks. Then we also produced uh, a quite classical communication product that is the newsletter. Uh, and we were able to send it uh, to many people, uh, thanks also to the webinar who were collecting a lot of people interested in uh, our activities. Um, there is also all the part uh, of the events and uh, uh, like um, an example are the exhibition that uh, all the partners, Marine Protected Areas partners of the project have done or are doing in, uh, in these days um, to show the effects of climate change in the Mediterranean at the global level, at the Mediterranean and at the level of the single MPAs. And the name of the exhibition is uh, Cool the sea. Uh, Pilar told us that, for instance, the presentation from uh, uh, Cap de Creus is now online. And then uh, we have, of course, the website that is uh, summarizing all we have done uh, with useful links also to our products. And finally, I left this as final product, we have the video. And you have seen uh, during the days, during the days of this uh, long event, uh, that at the start of each round table, we put these video pills that have been created uh, thanks to the uh, joint effort of MPA Engage and MPA Networks. These video pills were built uh, with the scope of being uh, social network products because, as you have noticed, they are very, very short. So it's the time people spend looking at video on uh, uh, social networks. And they are covering uh, most of the team that are uh, uh, important for uh, MPA Engage and for MPA networks. This is uh, the poster. Of the, of the video pills, uh, which have the same title as uh, this uh, uh, final event tour. And then um, for MPA Engage to get today, we will also would like to present you the documentary. So for this, I will call here also Ernesto uh, to present the documentary. 
Uh, this, sorry, these are the, this is the list of the video pills of um, PA Engage, which you can find uh, on the um, YouTube channel of the Stazione Zoologica. And this is the long video, which uh, has the title of MPAs Facing Climate Change. Ernesto, the floor is yours. Thank you, Manuela. Thank you, everybody. Uh, bon dia, totom, bonjour. Uh, we are really happy to, well, finalize in this way this uh, this three years of intense work. Uh, and uh, Joachim explained a little bit what we have been doing in the last three years. And uh, Manuela and uh, and hi, we did a, a huge work also in communication activities, both internal communication, but also to explain to the people what is happening in the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, this uh, intention is uh, summarized in the video pills, in our um, our communication products, and in this video documentary of 15 minutes that uh, we are now going to uh, present you. Uh, one of the first sentences of this, uh, of this video says, uh, the future we have been warned about has started to saturate the present. And this, this is a bit what we wanted to show to the general public wanted to show that climate change is not uh, somewhere, it's not uh, uh, happening in distant places, it's not something that uh, concerns the future, but it's, 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 it's something that is now, it's, it's happening now, and it's something that is being witnessed by local communities, by uh, uh, marine protected areas of the Mediterranean. So we started presenting the problems, the facts, the things that are happening in our sea from, from uh, the uh, increase in temperature, from the tr tropical invasion, uh, underwater desert, the uh, Pina Nobili crisis, uh, the seagrass facing uncertain future, a lot of microscopic changes that are happening where and where in marine protected areas. Uh, working as a network. And uh, this, is, this is another important concept of the documentary to show that uh, uh, marine protected areas are not facing those problems alone, but more or less everybody is having the same problems. Everything is uh, about a common regional problem, global problem, which is climate change. It's not only climate change because those problems interact, get in synergy with, uh, with all the other problems that we are facing, we are having in the Mediterranean, like pollution and uh, um, overfishing and, and so on. And, uh, and of course, uh, a final aim of, the, of this doc documentary was to show the action. Okay, there is the problem, but we, what we can do to, uh, to uh, mitigate or to adapt to this problem. So we also uh, present the action and the, all the tools that we developed to uh, face this, uh, this common problem. So I think that for the introduction of the documentary it's enough. I don't know if you can uh, start projecting the video. Thanks. Marine Protected Area Engage, engaging Mediterranean key actors in ecosystem approach to help manage marine protected areas to face climate change. Global warming is now. Sea level rise. Coastal erosion. Mass mortalities. Invasive species. Habitat loss. The Mediterranean is a climate change hotspot and we need urgent actions. Marine protected areas are the best sites where to monitor the change. Marine protected areas are the best sites where to develop adaptation strategies. Because our solutions are in nature. In partnership with local communities, governments, scientists and civil society. Act local. Think Mediterranean.
the beautiful Mediterranean. Unique ecosystems, rich in biodiversity, incomparable beauty. The ocean and the areas marine protected in particular provide multiple services ecosystemic. They provide food, they provide protection against the tormentas, they provide mitigation al the climate change through the absorption of the CO2. Nos proveen servicios turísticos. But the future we've been warned about has already started to saturate the present. The last 10 years have been the warmest decade ever recorded, scientists say, an unacceptable risk. Ten years ago, we had a very rich uh, algal coverage in the park, a very rich fauna, both in terms of species number and abundance, but now it's overgrazed by the Siganids, and uh, we find more and often uh, bare rock and only some tar-forming algal species. Weather patterns are changing, sea levels are rising, and weather events are becoming more extreme. Our model forecasts say that uh, climate change, not only temperature, but also increasing levels of uh, salinity, are changing the Mediterranean in a more favorable environment for tropical species. The consequences of climate change are mounting faster than predicted. En el Parque Natural del Cabo de Creus, el cambio climático está afectando dramáticamente las comunidades del coralígeno a través de repetidos episodios de, de mortalidades masivas de invertebrados como son las gorgonias. Que en los próximos 10 años, los paisajes submarinos de estas costas van a cambiar radicalmente. También vamos a ver aparecer especies que no habíamos visto nunca en estas zonas. Here at Brioni National Park in the North Adriatic, we have a new threat in the sea. And the name of the threat is bluefish. This threat, it's exterminating our fish. Siganids has invaded this place and now they are almost everywhere. Lionfish arrived two years ago and now they are practically everywhere. Some species are replacing the ecological functions of native species changes in species distribution, mass mortalities, habitat loss and the spread of invasive species are only a few of the most visible impacts seen on coastal biota. Lo que estamos observando es un aumento de la temperatura media de estas aguas y las previsiones que tenemos es que esto va a continuar. The mortalities are pretty bad and the effect of climate change on corals and sponges is pretty high. The Mediterranean Sea is warming three times faster than the world's oceans and even marine protected areas designed to achieve long-term conservation cannot escape the consequences of climate change. Several Mediterranean marine protected areas are already facing major biodiversity and functional alterations due to climate change, whereas others are expected to be impacted in the next few decades. Therefore, there is an urgency to mitigate these risks and consider adaptation options. Today, the Marine Protected Area Engage project funded by the Interreg MED program, helps Mediterranean marine protected areas fight climate change by searching for nature-based solutions to mitigate and adapt to the impacts of global warming. Mediterranean MPAs can play an important role as sentinel sites where to monitor the effects of climate change and where to develop adaptation strategies in collaboration in partnership with local communities. Actions are taken in partnership with local communities, decision makers, research bodies, socio-economic actors and civil society. 
the future of the Mediterranean and the survival of coastal communities is a priority concern. Eight marine protected areas from five Mediterranean countries were chosen as pilot sites for the development of climate change adaptation strategies. Por ello estamos aprendiendo, son nuestros sitios piloto para entender cómo mejorar y cómo afinar todas las herramientas que estamos desarrollando en estas actividades. Researchers and marine protected area managers are working together to track ecological impacts, create vulnerability assessments and develop plans for climate change adaptation. Marine protected areas are privileged sites where we can monitor the consequences of climate change and support global efforts towards their mitigation. Marine protected areas serve as sentry sites to track the effects of global warming. Scientists and marine protected areas are working to establish a systematic and harmonized observation system across the entire Mediterranean Sea. Invasive species, excess mortality, Posidonia meadows and other climate change indicators are regularly surveyed in accordance with common protocols. Ecological and socio-economic vulnerability to climate change is evaluated in each marine protected area. This is done by combining ecological exposure with ecological and social sensitivity to climate change. The adaptive capacity of key stakeholders and tourism is assessed. Vulnerability is the propensity to be adversely affected by the impacts of climate change. And vulnerability is calculated by combining socio-ecological indicator of exposure, sensitivity and adaptive capacity. Performing a socio-ecological vulnerability assessment in a marine protected area provides local managers to highlight the weaknesses of the area by measuring specific indicators. A socio-ecological vulnerability assessment was performed in each marine protected area involved in the project, but also uh, they evaluated the vulnerability of specific species, habitats and users, such as uh, recreational fishers and uh, recreational divers. To assess the socio-ecological vulnerability of the marine protected areas, managers had to collect the specific uh, data from their own databases, and they also sp performed specific monitoring activities on the species and habitats, and they had the opportunity to engage local managers to evaluate uh, their um, local knowledge and uh, perception to the impacts of climate change in the marine protected area. To support local managers to evaluate the socio-ecological vulnerability of the marine protected area, we have developed an interactive tool to facilitate local managers to visualize and calculate the results of the vulnerability assessment. To implement a specific uh, socio-ecological vulnerability assessment uh, as a solid uh, um, activity in the management plan of the marine protected areas, offers to uh, managers uh, valuable information to enhance the resilience of the area to the impacts of climate change. Citizens such as recreational divers and small-scale fishers are also engaged. Those are macroscopical changes that can be easily observed, especially by the people that live in strict contact with the sea, like fishers. In their lifetime, they observed those great change of the sea, and they were fishing some species in the past, and now they're fishing other kind of species. Some species disappeared, native ones, and other species appeared. They are a precious ally for monitoring the status of marine environments. 
Citizen science offers the possibility to engage divers, for example, or also fishermen, and offers us the possibility to exploit their experience, their knowledge, to better understand what is happening underwater during this period of climate warming. The possibility to exploit citizen science in the monitoring of MPA is something that is improving a lot the possibility also for managers to gather information for their management. Marine protected area managers understand the importance of this collaboration. The possibility to have hundreds of, or thousands of eyes that monitor and uh, tell us the stories about what is happening underwater is very, very important. We had this great opportunity to live this experience in MPA Engage project. We create two different tours in two years. We met uh, more than 100 diving instructors. We met more than 30 diving centers in more than 10 marine parks in the Mediterranean with a specific aim to train recreational divers to collect data on climate change. There is now the possibility for the first time to show in real time what the scientists are doing, uh, sharing their, their information directly with the open public. Abbiamo lavorato sui processi di citizen science e abbiamo lavorato insieme ai centri di immersione che con noi sono custodi di questo straordinario eh, monumento naturalistico. Sono molto fiducioso per il futuro perché questi nostri partner possono diventare a loro volta dei testimonial per diffondere in maniera appropriata i temi del cambiamento climatico e soprattutto la sensibilizzazione ambientale nei confronti dei grandi utenti. Recreational divers enjoy helping science. They are enriched with new knowledge, skills, values and attitudes needed to act as agents of change. A wide range of stakeholders is involved in project activities and adaptation strategies are discussed by a large assembly of associates which includes scientists, marine protected area managers and political bodies. The challenge is to capitalize the project's results by making the tested tools available, sharing the lessons learned in each marine protected area and promoting key recommendations at different policy levels. The acquired knowledge is then transferred to other marine protected areas, thus improving dialogue and coordination between marine protected area managers, scientists and local communities. A partir de las lecciones aprendidas en estas ocho áreas marinas protegidas piloto, vamos a capitalizar toda esta información, todas las herramientas desarrolladas para poderlas transferir a nivel de todo el Mediterráneo. Of course, it's important to monitor the effects of climate change in a common way, in a harmonized way. And the uh, MPA Engage project has developed a series of standard protocols that uh, actually help marine protected areas to join to a consolidated monitoring strategy. Nuestra intención, el objetivo final del proyecto MP Engage, es promover uh, que las áreas marinas protegidas sean una herramienta eficaz para la adaptación al cambio climático. Y para ello, todos los protocolos, todas las herramientas que hemos desarrollado van a ser clave para conseguirlo. MPA works in this way as a network and not as isolated entities.
building a network of Mediterranean marine protected areas fighting climate change. Due to climate inertia, the global temperature will continue to increase over the next years. But Mediterranean marine protected areas hold solutions which need to be properly supported. Around the world, millions of us are taking steps to defend our climate. Every day, we make choices about what food to eat, how to travel and how to behave. And Mediterranean marine protected areas are the best places for promoting a profound change in our behaviour. Not only as individuals, but also as members of communities and as citizens who can influence policy. A Mediterranean strategy to increase the resilience of our sea and our coastal communities. No country can succeed alone, but together we can make a difference. Engage with nature to connect with the very places that we are trying to protect. Act local, think Mediterranean. Okay, this is a bit the story of our project of the last three years. Uh, huge work. Um, uh, the footage has been done in seven different marine protected areas, including here in, in, in Cadaqués. And uh, well, I was, as I was saying before, it, it has been a way to touch to touch what is happening all over the Mediterranean Sea and also uh, a huge personal uh, experience for, for, for ourselves. And uh, what, what can I say more? And some of the stories are also uh, included in this, uh, in this little book, which is, its name is Boiling Mediterranean. And uh, as, as Manuel, we have a presentation on that? Okay, so we can use the presentation. And uh, yes, as Manuela was saying, we try to use different media, different uh, uh, words for, for different uh, targets. And uh, so this, uh, the same concept are also provided uh, in a book. In, in an, this is an illustrated book. Let me see if, if we have the presentation for that. Yes. Ah. Um, Bolin Mediterranean it's, uh, it's an illustrated book on, on the problems of marine protected areas related to climate change, but also uh, with, uh, with uh, experience. The, the book is bringing the experience of the MPA Engage project and also is thinking with the concept of the network, of the network of, of, of MPA. The book is translated in the different languages of the Mediterranean, in, uh, in, uh, in English, in, uh, it's provided in English, but then it's translated in French, in Italian, in uh, Spanish, Catalan, and um, Croatian. It will be translated in Arabic too. And very briefly, very briefly, it starts about the, the uniqueness of our sea. And then we start with the problem, with the illustrated problems, let's see, from extreme weather, tropical invasions, mass mortalities. Oops. Yes, mass mortalities. No, what's up? Oh. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe the, you got it, <laughs> it's too long. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, the, the, the book will be f 
freely available and uh, we have also some printed copy to share with you. I, I think I concluded now. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so <laughs> I'm here again to uh, moderate the last round table of uh, this session. And as Kim said at the beginning, this will be really informal. No presentation, only people uh, sharing together. So again, the word sharing. Uh, sharing together our experiences in uh, participating to these projects, uh, to um, both from the point of view of the organization and uh, from the personal point of view, if you want to share with us uh, what you learned, uh, what uh, have been, for instance, our frustrations, if you get something important from the project from the knowledge point of view, and everything you want to share about this. Uh, so uh, to start with this round table, I would uh, um, ask to uh, some people to reach me on the stage. So to Martina Herbat from Buni National Park, Lorenzo Merotto from Portofino, Hossein Basairi, I hope uh, I did something good <laughs> with your name, sorry, from the Université de Rabat Mohamed, and, and, from, and the director of this uh, park, which uh, uh, are hosting us. Uh, from my point of view, uh, as I said before, uh, I'm, I'm now um, uh, working in a different institution, but I've been working in the communication of MPA Engage uh, for almost all of the project. And it has been a, a really extraordinary personal experience. It was the first time I was working so closely in communication with the marine protected areas. And so I really learned how difficult it is for, for you, for them, for you, to um, uh, face all the problems, uh, all days. Uh, from our point of view, maybe it was some, uh, kind of frustrating sometimes to ask you a lot of information, a lot of contents for communication to share with the public and not receiving every time what we wanted. But I really understand that uh, could be really difficult uh, for you uh, for uh, um, uh, deal with all the duties that, uh, that you have. And from the point of view of the institution, because before I was working from the, for the Stazione Zoologica Anton Dorn, which is a research institution, um, I really think that uh, participating to this kind of project that are uh, uh, linked to the real world, uh, it's very important for research institution because you have always the, the danger to be uh, separate uh, from real application. I know. <laughs> um, I, I know that uh, many researchers are not very happy to, to spend their time in communication. Sometimes uh, they participate to some project and uh, is foreseen in the application form that you should spend really part of the project in communication, and uh, it, seems like, it, it, it is seen uh, like a waste of time in terms of research. But on the other hand, it's, I really think that is really, really important, uh, and uh, the team of Ernesto Azzurro actually is, uh, is working a lot also on this, on this side, uh, because what we do as researchers is not really useful if we don't also uh, speak with the, with the general public and with the ones that are uh, really trying to uh, change uh, the things. Uh, I will leave the floor to our first guest on the stage, so to Martina, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now it works? Yes. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here with you. You, you can go, yes. <laughs> Well, it was a really pleasure uh, to be involved in this uh, project. We in Brio National Park, as uh, a part of uh, the MPA Networks project, were involved in various activities. And um, as mentioned uh, by Manuela, it was really important to have a good communication with uh, the partners, with uh, our associated uh, partners with uh, the communities as well uh, and the different mm -hmm. other stakeholders. Uh, we were working on networking and uh, just to connect with the project MPA Engage. Uh, we tried really to uh, connect and engage uh, the MPA community mostly in Croatia uh, from the very beginning with an open conversation with the sincere uh, aim to collaborate, uh, to work together and have a mutual exchange uh, of experience. Um, I believe that we will uh, continue uh, with this project afterwards with the activities um, with uh, uh, the hope that the other will join us as well. Thank you. Uh, you can pass the microphone directly. <laughs> Thank you. To Lorenz. Good morning, uh, everybody. And uh, it's a pleasure to hear uh, to be, yeah. it work. Oh, OK, perfect. And um, it's a pleasure to be on this stage. And uh, as I see here, I am the missing link between uh, MPA networks and MPA Engage. Um, my work was mainly on MPA Engage and maybe Valentina more on um, MPA Networks, but uh, we, we work together and I think that uh, we, we um, work on two projects, but as one, because uh, um, they are very um, overlapping projects somehow with the networking. Um, also, in our case, uh, of for the involvement of the stakeholder, and I think that both the project uh, give um, uh, to an MPA a group of tools very useful. Uh, in particular, uh, for um, MPA Engage, I think that uh, is very uh, one of the most wonderful things of the, uh, of this kind of project, of this project, as MP adapt before. Um, is that uh, give to an MPA the tools and all the, you know, almost all the instrument to monitoring and study the situation of the MPA, not only from a climate change point of view, obviously the, the protocols are made for climate change, but um, the data uh, gathered are uh, very useful also for the, the general management of an MPA with particular attention to the climate change. And I think it is very important because uh, uh, often we, we work a lot with uh, the researcher, mainly the University of, uh, of Genoa. But um, the need of the research, of pure research, and the need of, the, of an MPA often are not the same because we have to be fast, understand what happened, and uh, and then uh, uh, try to fix. For example, uh, sometimes uh, the researcher have to publish, so they have to elaborate data and uh, and go on. So uh, all the tools of the monitoring protocols of MPA Engage is very useful from this point of view, because cover more or less all the uh, sectors, all the topic of uh, in the MPA. And instruments like uh, vulnerability assessment um, can make you uh, create the uh, more or less total knowledge of your MPA and uh, to find the, the treat, the, um, the most sensitive part, and so elaborate uh, um, some measure the adaptation plan, 
But uh, as I said before, not only for climate change, but in general. Because anyway, climate change is a red line that uh, unites all the problems. And uh, on the other side, on MPA networks, for example, for us, uh, was mm, both MPA networks and the MPA engage were, are, because also now, very useful to engage in general uh, the stakeholder on engage more with the divers and uh, in networks more with the, with the fishermen. And uh, the networking between different MPAs and the MPAs generally have uh, the same pro problems but a little bit different and the exchange that we, we have in MPA networks and MPA engage with other MPAs um, is uh, very useful to grow up uh, together uh, and to share because uh, yeah maybe I'm the, I, I think the concept of uh, network is I'm maybe a little bit more good in one sector than you you are more good in a, in a, in a gooder in, a, in another sector and we exchange and we grow or grow up together so uh, I think that is uh, maybe yeah, stop. <laughs> I want to say it's, it's a good thing. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, then we can have uh, the, uh, we can hear the voice of Hossein, who is representing, in this case, an associated partner. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, I'm uh, very delighted to be here uh, uh, with you. Uh, during this uh, final events of the two projects. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Kim uh, because he invited me and uh, my university to be an associate partner and uh, we were uh, honored by this and uh, I will... Uh, let me talk about uh, Two things, uh, first as an associate partner and second as an uh, end user of the products, the outcomes of this project as uh, an expert. So I present myself, I'm Hussein Bazairi, I'm a, a scientist in the university and I'm working on MPAs uh, now for uh, more than 20 years in the Mediterranean uh, part of the coast, Moroccan coast. So, we were involved in the project since the early uh, 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 training session that were on online. And we had the opportunity to participate, me, uh, many PhD uh, uh, doctors, PhD students, they prepare uh, their thesis in marine biology uh, in Morocco. So, it was very interesting and we learned a lot. Uh, and during time, we, we, I think that uh, all uh, one of the strength points of this project, main, main MPA engage project, that uh, uh, sharing, and that's a good point because they share all the products, all the what they are done uh, in real time, what they are the uh, deliverables, and so on, and you can find it easier on the internet. Uh, we work with them. Um, they are very friendly. Uh, if we need something, we can uh, ask. You can write to Kim, to Ernesto, and then there was no uh, problem with that. If I can say something about the MPA uh, project, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the partners for the effort they have done, the huge work that it was done in two years. And uh, as part from the other side, from the Mediterranean, yes, you, uh, you worked local, but you thought uh, Mediterranean, because we find myself and all the products that you have produced. Uh, and uh, then, what, uh, there's a huge work that was done, but uh, I want to uh, just tell, uh, because uh, we are in contact for many years, that behind this uh, multidisciplinary uh, uh, team, there's uh, 
many, uh, a lot of background in the Mediterranean, in the re Mediterranean region, because most of the, the colleagues worked in other parts from their country, and that's uh, a strength point uh, in uh, elaborating the strategies and the products, because I think largely they have an idea what is what happens in other countries, uh, mainly from the north and the southern uh, parts of the Mediterranean. So, if I conclude with the MPE uh, project, uh, Engage project, it's uh, huge expertise uh, and uh, relevant expertise at the local, but also and mainly at the regional scale. Uh, there is uh, sharing, it's a term that uh, I very appreciated because it was real. We can, all the, uh, the documents were shared on the deliverable. Uh, and also, uh, I think that, yeah, as I told you, it's uh, the work. Uh, I would like to that we, uh, one of the MPAs in the South, uh, to be in there because it's another context, another experience. But uh, I understand that the scope of the project didn't allow it. I hope that in future, because it's very interesting to be part of this uh, reflection at uh, the regional. Uh, uh, at the regional scale. Uh, now I will talk about a end user of this product. I'm uh, working on the MPA uh, in Morocco. While well, we have just one official MPA, it's called the National Park of Al Husayma in the Mediterranean. But we have worked in the framework of project with Sparak, and now we identified two others MPA that uh, the Morocco has uh, decided to declare them in the future as other MPAs. Uh, Cabo Tres Forcas in the Jebel Musa in the Gibraltar Strait. And we are now in this, I, in this MPA of Al Husayma, we are working on, uh, because the law on marine protected areas has changed, and now we are preparing a management plan. In this, uh, all the products, uh, and I'm involved uh, in this management plan. And I will assure you that uh, all these ideas, uh, I was very happy to, uh, to provide from this opportunity because I had many ideas uh, that we can translate uh, in our management plan that we, to will be repository in, uh, in the future. So yes, we, uh, we will use these uh, protocols because we, have, we do some monitoring in these uh, areas in, in Morocco. And yes, we will... Uh, try to do uh, uh, the same protocols in order to enable data that can be used at regional scale. And we had this experience with publishing with uh, Kim, and we can, when we are together, we can uh, do uh, many uh, good things. So uh, uh, just to finish, uh, I think that during these days, uh, we had uh, a good idea about where we want to go. Uh, the objective, uh, I mean that we have an idea what the situation we uh, uh, forecast in the, the future. And there was some recommendation from the project, or the two projects, that what could be the ways uh, to achieve or to arrive to this situation. And from my opinion and my experience in Morocco, the case that I, I know very well, there's two key challenges if we want to go ahead. The first one, it's uh, the level of participation. I mean that working in 20 years, sometimes we are disappointed because we feel that MPA are not a priority for my country. So there was an example, the Turkish example, and I think it's a good example that when we uh, work at the high level, things can go uh, very easy. Uh, uh, after. And the second point is that uh, all what we are doing in Morocco, it's by project approach. So there's not an involvement of the country. And if we can do something, we have to see what strategies to adopt and to involve the country in the future that can go for the monitoring, for the, the management and so on. So thank you to be late. Uh, I'm enthusiastic to, to work. I'm very happy to be here with you, and we hope that we can collaborate in the future. And you are welcome to work to work on our uh, 
ecosystems in the Mediterranean and Morocco. Thank you very much. Thank you really for, your, for the, taking the voice from the southern part of the Mediterranean. And I'm sure that also I can say from Kim and Ernesto that we are very happy for your appreciation uh, about our products and that you will use them. So uh, this is very important for us. And then I can leave you the floor, please. Okay, thank you. Well, it was, uh, actually, it was also a pleasure for us to be collaborating in this project, to be involved in this project. Uh, actually, it was the, I'd like to thank uh, Pilar, Judith, Gemma, Sarah from our department and also Gerard from our natural park to, to, be, to, be, to be the person who have, who have taken part of this project along these years. Uh, I'm recently the director of this natural park, just a year and a half, so my experience here, here has been only for one year and a half, but it's been very intense and I think we've worked uh, very well and we've learned a lot of things. Uh, it's good for us to be here because um, I think this is a, a huge problem, it's a massive problem, and we're not facing it together. And we realized with this project that we have tools, not just to analyze, to, to see how things are happening, how fast are happening, how deeply and how worrying are they, but only to know how to prevent the consequences of this, this severe problem. So it's been really useful for us to, to know that there are other countries, other parks, similar to the ones we have here, to work together in this, in this project. For us, it's been also very important for two other things. One is, I think we should highlight the, the importance of science, citizen science. We've been collaborating with different people, and actually some of them are invited here to listen to this, to this workshop today. And I think this is a, a, good, uh, a good point because they can also help us not only for researching what is the problem, what are the tools to, to prevent them, but also to uh, warn people and to make a lot of communication works and job to, to realize for all, all of the people that are concerned in this problem, that I think is the, hu uh, the huge uh, uh, or the whole uh, humanity, that the problem is uh, part of all of us. So, Citizen science is good for, for managing the parks, for knowing more information about what is happening there, but also to, to, to send this message to all, all the people. And also for us it's been important because we are now working, as I told you before, with our uh, pl management plan. And the management plan means that we have to explain this problem, this, this huge um, uh, challenge we have in front of us, to all the, the people who are involved in a natural park. That means people who are working in touristic activities, to divers, snorkels, uh, fishermen, both professional and, and recreational, also politics in local uh, governments. So this is a very important tool to show how deep is a problem and to show that we have to act and we have to change things in a different way that have been done until, until the day today. So I think it's been very useful for us to be here and I'd like to, to thank really all the scientists and, and mainly in our case to Kim to, to lead all, all this program in, in Catalonia. And I think it will be a really useful tool for the follow, following years to work together. And apart from that, we now uh, know how you work in other countries, how you work in other national parks or natural parks, and we'll be able to work together in the, in the following years. Thank you. Uh, now it's time to uh, discussion and exchange with you if you want to share also your experience in being involved in the project. It's time. We are really tired. Yes, sure. <laughs> no. Thank you. Uh, well, I would like to highlight one point that I understood from uh, the work with uh, the colleagues in MPAs. This is something that was pointed out uh, before in uh, the speech of my colleagues. And this is the difference uh, between MPAs, but, well, the marginalization uh, sometimes. Um, sometimes we find ourselves struggling with the administration, with other sectors. Uh, we feel that they don't understand us. And uh, when we talk about uh, issues like climate change, it's something that sometimes 
become marginal with other problems when we compare it to it. Uh, my colleagues organized a training uh, in Zagreb on climate change, um, and what we saw is that the park were quite interesting to take part, but when they saw how many information they need to be able to assess uh, the state of their parks, they were quite uh, discouraged because they say, okay, we don't have this minimum information. Um, and then when we think about uh, who will do the adaptation, then we see that the, the stronger, let's say, uh, between uh, brackets, a uh, park can do it, uh, but the other parks are really struggling with the essential. Um, what I saw is that we really need to be um, pushing each other uh, and um, the activities like we had in the project, uh, like twinning, exchanging, uh, the tools that were made available online are uh, quite amazing and really, really helpful. But at the end, if somebody wants to pursue this path, um, sometimes it's uh, difficult because you need some park to boost you, to help you, to support you. And I really think that with this two project, we made uh, something for the future. I'm quite confident that after the lifetime of this project, by doing the networking, by sharing the tools, by twinning, by connecting, by knowing each other better uh, in uh, events like that, online uh, and different other uh, meetings, we really can call each other and say, Tina, can you help me out with that? <laughs> Nobody is going to help me or I don't understand something and I'm really sure that Andrea, Alena, Carol, Loron, uh, Lorenzo, Valentina and others will help you. Because with this project we understood it's not only the acronyms of the project. Uh, behind this project, behind these letters, you have really uh, nice, amazing people that will help you. And please keep that in mind uh, after the lifetime of this project. When you feel that you, are, um, you don't have the strength to continue, or you don't have data, or um, you don't know what to do, just call somebody, and I think that they will tell you, do citizen science. You don't have a data, but the divers can help you. And with this project, I'm sure that we will do something uh, beautiful afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I can use this. You can. Take <laughs> so thanks a lot for highlighting the importance of the networks and the importance of the fact that it will continue after the end of these two projects and that the network is made of people that uh, can create strong uh, links between them and as you nicely said, uh, they will continue after the end of the project. Probably there will be other new projects, but this network now is living and uh, will help uh, each other a lot. So, um, someone wants to intervene? Okay, someone is there. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you for this big effort and this nice networking. But as an MPA manager, I want to I want to make a concrete question because when we are talking about climate change, we are talking about nature-based solutions. And I would like to know in your MPA's uh, concrete actions you are improving. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, it's from uh, our side. Uh, with, for, for example, with uh, vulnerability assessment, we know uh, the damage done by climate and we know the direct human impact. For example, the fisheries, the uh, nets, lines on the Gorgonian, okay, on uh, Akei, Akei habitat. And uh, so we see, we is uh, new that uh, um, uh, damage Gorgonian, damage coral 
is um, more sensitive to heat waves than uh, another one completely healthy. If you have uh, two Gorgonian near, one with impact, and um, other wi without, you are quite sure that the one with uh, lo the lines uh, die first. But uh, so we, we know also the measure, yeah, yeah remove the, uh, mm, forbid the, 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 that kind of fishing and uh, the, the habitat become more, uh, more uh, less uh, sensitive. But um, uh, this is a, an example. So we know uh, our measure are more or less all of this kind. Posidonia meadows, um, avoid any damage. So th this kind of, of measure. Or oh, others on uh, awareness, citizen science, and, uh, and something like that. But I think that there is uh, a lack. In fact, after the uh, Martina comments, I want uh, to add uh, one thing, the, because uh, I think that uh, the, this group, okay, the MPA in general, uh, the researcher, uh, have uh, the, a lot of uh, NGOs, sometimes also the region, know the problems, and, um, but it's, di it's difficult to have a policy to improve in that direction. O often uh, we, 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 we know the situation, we know some uh, of, the, of the solution, but uh, some mitigation measure, but it's difficult to uh, apply because we have uh, uh, bigger problem. Bigger problem, I say, for example, political problem, and uh, as Martina say, the climate change, the MPA are not in the top of this, uh, of this, um, of, of their priority. So I think that uh, the, this network in general uh, can push it's an instrument to push to go in uh, the right direction because uh, an MPA alone or a researcher alone can do um, a lot of uh, difference maybe. But together we, we, we some, somehow can lobby on uh, uh, the policy maker at different uh, uh, level. But we have to pass through the stakeholder uh, uh, engagement uh, for sure. Thank you. Um, and perhaps I would like to add something. Um, I'm not perhaps the best person to talk about uh, the activities that were carried on in um, Brioni regarding uh, MPA Engage because we have my colleague Andrea <laughs> who afterwards can tell you more. But just briefly, uh, the work done by the park were uh, extensive uh, with the stakeholder engagement, with uh, the consultation with uh, the stakeholders, um, with uh, the vulnerability assessment, a really good vulnerability assessment uh, of uh, the park was carried on, and uh, the adaptation measures uh, were uh, structured. Uh, and some of these measures are already being implemented. Uh, with some activities uh, toward removing the plastic, uh, reducing our uh, footprint on the island, with many communication activities, engagement with, we, we cannot really, what I want to highlight, we cannot avoid climate change. We are not pretending that we will do it, that we will skip it with any of these activities. However, we wanted to raise the voice to say it's happening, it's not the future, it's now. We have to face it, and uh, we tried to um, show uh, the local community uh, what kind of changes they can expect and how they can adapt. Uh, some days ago, there was a really nice uh, event that took place in the island with um, uh, named Hook and Cook, uh, with uh, the preparation of some really delicious recipes of invasive species, not perhaps invasive, but um, some new species that, are, uh, that came in our waters that people are not really familiar how to cook, how to prepare, and to look at them at, in a really negative way. So uh, what the park did is really uh, to highlight uh, this issue as was pointed out before that it's not 
perhaps sometimes the top priority. Thank you. And of Are course, we... sorry. No? Uh, um, also, there is a change in uh, the management plan and some uh, activities were implemented, uh, were inserted in this management plan. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comment? Yes. Yes. Um, Maybe about the future, I believe that, um, yes, we say we have to raise a voice, and, but we have to be conscious also that we are playing a role as MPAs and MPAs managers. That is crucial because uh, climate change for me is linked to everything else. If it's, links, it's linked also to development. So uh, there is a cumulative process and, the, and we have to insist on that because I can see that sometimes we forget also that maybe we need a higher level of protection generally in order to, uh, to face this climate change issue. Uh, I'm mentioning as an example the, the apex predators. When you, we were speaking some days ago about uh, recreational fisheries, but when you, s you know that the first target are apex predators, uh, like, um, let's say, groupers, and you know that those groupers could be an answer also to lionfish, because we, we have to reconsider a little bit those uh, based natural uh, solutions, that we are, we are the one that have to fight about that and to convince decision makers that they have to make decisions, very important and quick decisions. So it's something also, we always we can eat all lionfish, it's nice, thank you. But we have a huge problem of biodiversity anymore. So let's insist also on our role, how to make uh, this protection, the higher, higher level of protection, because it's a part of the solution for sure. Yes, I fully agree. Uh, in Croatia, uh, as in other countries currently, uh, we are working on um, defining the pledges for uh, reaching the targets uh, of the European Biodiversity Strategy to 2030. And what I saw is that uh, there are some uh, ideas how to reach the target of 30%. However, uh, we know that uh, the strict protection will deliver the best results. Uh, and this strict protection, this 10%, it's quite tricky. Uh, and honestly, as I see it in Croatia, I don't know how we will achieve it. Um, first, uh, as uh, um, the topic, what is strict protection, is, is the first question. And uh, I think that we should first uh, understand what we expect of the strict protection. Is it only non-extraction or can be some extraction uh, or something else? Uh, however, uh, I think that on that part, unfortunately, we won't uh, reach the 10%. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Daniela Minetti, Regione Liguria. Um, I, uh, I link my uh, observation to uh, what to say before to uh, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Merotto. Um, uh, the participation of Regione Liguria to this, uh, to this project was really interesting for us. Uh, and I see a, a, a big result uh, in uh, the um, consolidate of the, this network with the uh, MPA network and um, NPA engage. And uh, I think that uh, is a value, it's a really important value for all Mediterranean, this, this kind of, uh, of network. But uh, in my experience, uh, there were, uh, in, we can improve our relationship with uh, marine protected areas that are national 
uh, institution, and we are a regional institution, and uh, uh, we can, uh, and uh, MPA are uh, a hotspot of biodiversity, of research, uh, of uh, a sort of gymnasium uh, for uh, um, the sustainable uh, development uh, model, uh, and so on. And we need uh, uh, the relationship with them because uh, we can improve uh, this, uh, this policy um, in, in linked with our own action in order to involvement of uh, economic actors, uh, uh, different uh, policy, the, our own uh, regional uh, protected areas, uh, and build another another network inside this this network. And uh, link this network with uh, the network that we have uh, for with uh, the uh, uh, the other region uh, with Europe uh, in order to the European strategy and European funds uh, that uh, dialogue directly with the region, for example. Uh, and, and this is a, 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 another opportunity. And so we can enlarge uh, this network with the other network, and it's really important, this kind of exchange. And, um, and we have to enlarge also with the, 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 um, the civil society uh, network that are working in, uh, on this topic, not just uh, at the level of NGO, but also the people that are working to change the behavior of uh, consumer, the behavior of uh, uh, method uh, of uh, um, economics actor in different uh, in different way. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, this is a project that built uh, something more than uh, the simple results of uh, of the project. And this is uh, what Kurt uh, Cervelli and all the people that uh, spend money uh, give money for us to, to spend it uh, want. Uh, so go on, not, not just for the, the objective, the deliverable, and so on, but to build something else. Uh, and we know very well what we have to do for the future because we uh, learn very much from this project. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, is there someone who worked here to the pilot action who wants to share his experience, our experience? So uh, you, you mean uh, whatever pilot action? No, I, actually I was uh, asking if someone from uh, Cap de Creus who uh, was, yeah, but you can of course also share yours if you want. Um, is someone from Cap de Creus who was working to the project uh, on the field wanted to intervene to, to tell us uh, his or her experiences? Well, we have several people who have been working here. We have if you want, of yeah, course. Yeah, Eduard, he maybe also can help us. But I would say, well, maybe some of you can explain something. Uh, actually, Eduard is working in sci citizen science. Uh, he's retired now, but he's a very uh, a, a, a fascinating, enthusiastic <laughs> man from the undersea. And he's trying to help us with the pin and nobilis and other species. To just so go ahead, no, Eduard. El problema es la expresión. En inglés no puc parlar i que m'entenguin. Però bueno, l'experiència que tenim és que vam descobrir això a mitjans de l'any passat. Ens vam introduir en dos projectes, bàsicament, el buscar nacres entre dues persones que al voltant de la costa, que hi ha entre roses i colera, n'hem trobat 12 de vives com a resultat del treball de dues persones amb una mica de temps. I el segon és el del canvi climàtic amb els peixos, no? que estem dinamitzant un grup local, que ja tenim en aquests moments sis punts de mostreig i d'aquests sis punts podem arribar a vuit, nou per aquest any 2022. Però bé, és un compromís que tens, la sensibilització ja la portem interioritzada d'alguna manera i volem créixer a nivell local. Això. Do you want to say what you did? So, Luart and some of his colleagues, they are working in helping us in Cap de Creus. 
in like two different projects. Actually, Eduardo was one of the first people here to realize a mass mortality of bee bugs uh, last summer, was that? So he's, he's, he saw it and they fast explained us this problem and we did say it to Kim and his team. So apart from that, they are helping us, us with um, pin anomalies that they realized also that there, there are still some individuals that they are alive, so they are monitoring them. They're following the, the same itineraries several times a year, and they realize that some individuals are still alive in the park and also uh, outside the park area. And apart from that, they are monitoring also fish. They are doing transects with fish. They say, I think there's two or three now at this moment, or six now, and then they, they, they will probably increase to 12 or 10 to 12 different transects. And all of them are is done by enthusiastic people like, like, like them. Uh, and they are doing it like citizen science. I think, as I said before, that citizen science is a, a big help for us, not only for knowing things and to improve the, the knowledge we have about that, but also to, uh, um, to spread the message to all of, our, all of our, the people who are linked to the sea. They deserve an applause. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Deserve an applause. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, I, I just want to um, say thank you for this event. I, I am Marta, and I have started recently working here in the in Spanish uh, MPAs all, all around the, the country. I'm based here in Girona. And yes, as uh, she was talking before, that sometimes to work between regional uh, spaces and national spaces is kind of difficult, but I think these events here are very useful because now I can put faces to the actors that are working here and a uh, beautiful ex example, for example, uh, of good network is like the last week we were working together uh, searching for the Pina Nobilis in, in Cap de Creu. So we are like, uh, when we mm, link the efforts from mm, regional, national, and uh, citizen uh, science, it, the, the work uh, goes well, while my English is. But uh, what I want to say is that thank you for this event, and that for me it's been very uh, useful because I've been working in the sea, but uh, to manage MPAs is like a very new topic. And these protocols can be very useful for people like me that want to do something significant, uh, but it's very difficult because uh, sometimes from the administrations, there are like, you have to focus in this, 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 but there, you cannot um, divide spaces. I mean, nature, it's a continuum, and climate change, it's a continuum that uh, it's linked with all the nature topics, and well, uh, I just want to say that uh, if we work together, uh, we will uh, arrive further. <laughs> there is a comment? Yeah. Hello, I'm Marita Rase from Lebanon. I want to say that I am impressed what I saw this uh, four days, five days. And uh, I learned a lot from what you have and uh, what, what are you doing. Uh, I think we, you need to go more to the media, to the news, to uh, make what do you have in more awareness for the new generation. Because uh, if I'm not here, I didn't know what's happened in the Mediterranean, what, what kind of big work you are doing. You need to go more to the news. We need, you need to go more for the new generation, uh, not only in social media, but more in the news and in the television of the Mediterranean, if you can go there. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Hi, we have an online question from an online participant, uh, Mr. Igor Busturia Cerezo. He asks, in the UK, one measure to deter the fishing impact in MPAs is by constant monitoring of the industries by the Fisheries Monitoring Centre. Is that a measure that could be implemented in the Mediterranean? Thank you. I'm just going to repeat the question. In the UK, one measure to deter the fishing impact in MPAs is by constant monitoring of the industries by the fisheries monitoring center. Would that measure be possible? It could it be implemented in the Mediterranean? That is the monitoring of, of, uh, of the industries by the fisheries monitoring center. This is an example that is being implemented in the UK. I believe it's a question for Kim, perhaps? No? <laughs> <laughs> Networking, Kim, please. <laughs> this uh, monitoring system, but it's true that uh, we need monitoring, and this is why we are kind of developing these monitoring frameworks to gather in an harmonized way uh, information to inform uh, decisions. So, yeah. I if this is working in UK, that's fantastic. What we are trying to, we can uh, maybe check and see what, how they are doing this, and maybe adapt it to the Mediterranean framework. Okay, thank you. So thank you. Uh, just several things about the communication tools and everything you talked. First of all, thank you, thank you very much for all the tools and all the contents you have provided. You were saying, okay, you were asking us, but at the same time, you did a good job because this is, yeah, Thank you, you. you realize it's, it's something that is needed. We are asked, but in the middle of all the other things, it's, okay, we'll try, we'll try. But it's, we have to think of special um, people to do that. And so another thing, um, this morning I, I am in contact with our, um, community manager and just sending pictures and texts and we plan a little bit and connecting connected with what you are saying she was like oh i am so pleased to piula um, to to tweet <laughs> about this uh, you will have to wait because first go the um, uh, pollution event of uh, the saharan dust then we have some fires uh, because they are, um, they are, um, yeah, they are harvesting now, and with this extreme hot wave, some um, fires are burning. So we are the last. But she was so pleased to be able to tweet something nice, beautiful, and you know, positive. <laughs> and then to Eduard Marquez, his article about. Um, mortality of uh, Las Arquetas uh, was uh, published in yeah. the newsletter. Yeah, yeah. It was published yeah, in the last so, newsletter. Yeah, the, the last summer. So things are right. And then we tried as well to bring um, journalists from our TV here. There, there was a coincidence with other political events that go always first. Yeah, we have, I don't know, to pay or to ask, you know, like the prime minister or as <laughs> our colleague was saying. So on Thursday, there was an important thing. And today, I think they are like announcing the blue flags of the beaches, but it's like the beaches that have um, showers and good quality yeah. of water, which is, Okay, that's okay, but <laughs> it's not natural beaches or, you know, nature. So it's been, and today, okay, a journalist had to come, but he's like uh, waiting for if there is something important or an emergency, they have to cover. So it's been, it's really difficult and we have to find, uh, I don't know, or to, to make politicians or high people um, realize the importance of, uh, all this. So thank you. 
Thank you, Pilar. And also thank you for your, all your inputs anyway, <laughs> and to the inputs for, from all the other MPAs. And I know that involving journalists is really difficult because we are not in the top priority, uh, our topics are not in the top priority, so we should really try to invent some news that could be kind of particular topic uh, for the public, and even if the most important things uh, are others, we should find the trick to be pushed up uh, in the different news that can be in the interest. Please. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I'm Mokhtar Said from National Council uh, for Human Rights in Libya. Uh, I was in the Ministry of Environment, so uh, really I'm, I, I, I like what I have seen in those days in, uh, in these meetings and uh, the importance for the projects like in what I've seen in for MBA project and the MBA network. Uh, and I'm going maybe in the history of the MBA, I'm going back to, uh, in, the, in, in the Mediterranean in general. Uh, really, Medpan, they are uh, playing good uh, work in the Mediterranean and they make this big family uh, what we have in, in, here now as a, a network in all the Mediterraneans. And also, like those projects that, uh, that you have uh, for brief, brief year, previous years, I mean, uh, for just uh, maybe four or five countries from the Mediterranean, I hope that in, in future, if you have another project like those projects, to involve other MBAs from Mediterranean, let's say from uh, South Mediterranean, from other uh, countries, I'm sure that those projects that they will make this network an effective network in the Mediterranean, and we will help the Midpan what what uh, they are doing w with the, with the network in the Mediterranean. Because really, this family now we all of us know each other uh, for many years. Before Midpan, they start to work uh, as a network in the Mediterranean. Everyone here is work maybe uh, alone, and sometimes we are meeting in other uh, COPs or other meetings, but now I think it is effective, and if we think in future about other projects, please, please try to involve other, other MBAs in the Mediterranean. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I think uh, we can take one last question, because I see the hand, but then I think we need to close and uh, good for lunch. Thank you. So, I'm uh, Marina Chiappi from uh, uh, Università Politecnica delle Marche and uh, Enalia Physis. And uh, uh, I would like to underline, to, to underline the concrete uh, ability of this project to uh, develop uh, very interesting collaborations between um, among many different uh, MPAs all around the Mediterranean uh, area. And uh, I would like to thank you all, and especially uh, Ernesto Azzurro, uh, because I, um, I feel like uh, I'm an, an example of uh, um, this uh, success since uh, while being sti still a student in Italy, uh, I had the possibility to um, to open a new collaboration with uh, Cyprus, and uh, it was, uh, I mean, very very interesting, and uh, and uh, I was uh, very, I am still very grateful for it. So thank you. Thank you, Marina. And I would also like to thank uh, our participants on the stage, uh, all of you and all the organizers of this great event, uh, Kim and uh, Carol, and here, Paula, of course. <laughs> so thank you, and uh, Kim and uh, Carol can, can come here for the closing. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we came together to celebrate uh, the end of uh, two projects. 
But I think what we have been uh, celebrating together last few days is more uh, the fact that uh, we are a growing community of practice. So beyond the end of uh, this project, definitely, this community, this family will last. And I think this is a real virtue of this kind of, uh, of projects beyond tools, beyond the financial support. I think this is a key added value and interest of uh, this kind of uh, uh, collaboration is that, uh, as it was mentioned by Martina and Lorenzo, we can know now better each other. We know uh, we can contact somebody if uh, we want to have answers to our question or even if you seek for uh, support. And I was reflecting actually since yesterday, uh, Kim made a very nice uh, quote because funnily, currently I'm reading Edgar Morin. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this quote was about uh, a kind of metaphor or life is like uh, sailing through an ocean of uh, uncertainty and we are seeking for islet of uh, certainty. But I think, and this project uh, illustrates this uh, perfectly, in terms of uh, navigating our respective life, uh, maybe one key uh, success factor or factor of uh, happiness is uh, the encounter you do, the people you, you meet. And in this regard, um, beyond the techniques, beyond the knowledge, what is the most important is the kind of solidarity you can build with uh, your peers, but as well with the uh, stakeholders. And I'm very grateful that uh, our two projects have been able to, to team up because definitely it has been more challenging. But the saying, you know, uh, related to the fact that when you are alone, you can go fast, but when you are together, you can go further. It has been very true. And I do believe that the quality of our exchanges, the good spirit of the discussion, has been a clear illustration of uh, this reality. So despite maybe uh, the grumpy mood or the, the pessimistic uh, tone of uh, the ambassador yesterday, I do believe, like Romain, that uh, we have sound reason to be optimistic and the key one is our community. So let's celebrate it and work uh, together for the Med. Thank you. I fully joined all the words by Carol. So yeah, it has been challenging, but with, as I, I think that it says, uh, uh, Tony Fon in, uh, in the closing session in Palma, I would say, why you organize such a joint event? Because there, no, there was no other way of doing it, right? So, so here we are, and, uh, and I think that uh, from these days we, we have, uh, we, at least uh, I'll come home with uh, more hope, because yesterday, for instance, in one of the interventions by the, um, uh, an officer of the, the Interreg Met, uh, uh, Curcio Cervelli, he, he, they are working on a gathering, to putting in the Interreg Met projects, which is only, till now, only uh, MPAs from uh, the, uh, the European countries, they are opening this to other MPAs. So there is hope that we will be working. There are other instruments that we will be uh, able, or that, that they are already in place, and we have to tackle as well this challenge because, you know, every day we have many issues there. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so pleased uh, to, we are the braves, we make it uh, through four days, uh, some of us. So I just to thank you, all of you, uh, for your participation, the people online that has been following us, the technicians that have been here uh, arranging all the things to make it this happen, the interpreters, the MedPan people that uh, are supporting us with the chat and uh, checking that the people in the Zoom are doing well and uh, knowing how I was doing all your efforts, all the teams uh, making this happen. So I'm going to uh, invite you. Uh, I have many things to say, but uh, the lunch is waiting for us. I think that it would be nice because you share many thoughts and uh, we need even more time to share all the thoughts. But I would, I'd like to invite you to join me in the stage and take a final picture 
of, uh, of this event before going to the, to the, uh, to the lunch, okay? So come here and uh, we will make a big applause, round of applause for everybody, I think, because uh, we deserve it and uh, thank you very much. session in Marseille of a, as a, a short video. Yeah. Sí. de la sesión inicial de Marsella y es yeah. de donde venimos. This or ¿Has tú la foto quién? ¿Eh? ¿Has tú la foto quién? No, 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 la fa. <laughs> es que fas de todo. <laughs> so serious. <laughs> Luis, uh, 